Disclaimer. Content warning for this video. This movie contains flashing lights. Lots of flashing lights. Blood. Pedophilia mentions. It, as well as other themes such as dependency issues. As well as PT, how people deal with PTSD. If any of those somehow bother you, it's okay if you're not to watch this video. There are other videos you can watch. You don't have to watch this one if you don't want to. It's fine with me. Just type in my review. It's calling me. It's call me. Why would it be call me? Hello? No. I'm not doing a fucking ring parody. That's stupid. Fuck off. Who is this? Get it? Because we're reviewing phones. Um, this wasn't funny, was it? Hey guys, I just want to start this review with a bit of note of bias for this movie. I have a really good and interesting history with this movie because I own it and for a really long time. And I really do love this movie. I so let's go back in time to 2010. It was a different era. You know, Gangnam Style was there and you go, oop, oop, all you want, that's fine. But like, it was a different time. I was working in a weird sort of area of California that has like, the ghetto, this like, G Parkway, the ghetto was here, and there was like an Asian market over here, and then my job was like over here. So every kind of now and then, when I got off of work, I would go with my brother and my friend, best friend to the Japanese market because I was the fullest that edge lord mode then. And I, hell, I, hell, I remember when I first bought the, this the movie, it was a weird bootleg they chop in like just Asian market square because it was like Japan, Japanese, Chinese, Korean. All three, then like Taiwan and all that. So it was kind of weird and interesting how it happened there. But so I was going through the movies looking for something spooky because it was October and I see this movie just hanging out and it looked interesting to me. So I bought it. And so to put my bias aside for this review, a movie I really love. So I was going to start this video off with the hugest amount of bias possible here. You know, it's not just. It's not just, hey, you know, it's a stupid, goofy movie. It's a stupid, goofy movie that I fucking love. That I fucking love, you know? So let's get this review started properly now. And go. So we start our journey off properly with a woman entering the beginning scene and the beginning jump scare and a flashing elevator room of doom. And after the credits finally get over, we learn that the woman was an eternalist trying to expose a pedophile ring in Korea when her boss says, no, 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 don't do that. There is paranormal activity in this area, why don't you do that instead? But that's kind of really weird to me, wouldn't... Even an alleged pedophile, even if there's an alleged pedophile right here, wouldn't you want to have some form of journalistic integrity and expose the truth? Is this not winning political backfire? I'm not sure, but our hero was kind of not okay with it either. But hey, she also has X-Files references all over her house. Meaning she is premier waifu material, guys, in my eyes, at least. Interesting side note, though. The hero seems to share the same name with the actress playing her. Was that coincidence? Oh, well, who cares? Back to the story. And we also find out later that she's being stalked by a stalker who sends her an email to a dead woman. And I cannot show you that, however. I can show her reaction. Which, honestly, she's a really good actress, by the way. Because that, that is so hokey, I didn't think she'd react to it. But hey, she did. Good on her. So to be honest, this woman is the smartest horror character I've seen since, like, forever now. Because she doesn't stay around to get stalked somewhere like some people would. I mean, if it were. <clears throat> she decides that, you know, the best thing to do is leave the house. I don't know, it's like, it sounds dumb to say this, but, like, she could have stayed, get stalked, sent more d d dead women out EXEs, but she didn't stay. She leaves. And then, and it's really great because she fucking just leaves. And stay, because that's a safe place where a stalker. But sometimes she's the dumbest because she opens more emails from the stalker and getting those downloading attachments of deadwomen.exe and a virus. Or is this the Matrix? I can't tell anymore. But the Matrix does offer her its phone number, so Matrix girls, if you're looking to hook up, Matrix is single. And honestly, back to being, our friend as being smart, she does something the smartest thing she could have done and change her number. And then leaves her bag with a small child, knowing she's being stalked, and 
And this woman just takes one step forward and, like, sprints all the way fucking back because this fucking phone rings in an art gallery. For some reason. It was on an art gallery. Who cares? And the child now answers it. And now she is traumatized. For, like, forever now. Because you exposed a child to a stalker potentially being told horrible things to her. Who? This woman, one step forward, 300 steps back, I swear. We also get what I feel is the perfect jump scare in all of horror history, in my opinion. And it's done so right. The scene's really intense. She's trying to console this woman and cover her toe with hair. Sadako, please leave Korea, please. But then it ends with her getting grabbed by a hand, which, and then jumps her wake, to her waking up. Which really, really works well to show how tense a jump scare can be when used effectively, and how tense a situation in mental states can be. Like I said in my disclaimer, this covers PTSD and stress in a way that no other movie has done, really. I mean, if they do, obviously, there's better examples, I'm sure, but this does it really well, in my opinion. And I think that's pretty fucking cool, honestly. And that pedophile ring from earlier just fucking disappears. For no reason. It just fucking disappears. There's no mention of it. There's no fucking bring it up again. And it probably should. It probably should because, and here's why. So, the stalker finds the girl. And the stalker could totally reveal that he's part of the pedophilia ring. And then, bam, she tries to kill her to cover up the pedophilia ring. Go, you know, she survives. Ghosts are stressed. Bam, movie over. It would have been pretty eh at best, but that would have been greater than what it does with it. Which is nothing. <laughs> it's never mentioned after this point in time. And it probably should be later. <laughs> I'll tell you why. But, so, the soccer does be feeling her hair. And he doesn't get to kill her, thankfully, because her phone rings. And the phone kills him? Unless that's the ghost... I think the ghost is attacking him. And you attack its weak point for massive damage. But it's weird, but I love it. Sort of. It's kind of hard to explain. Unless it's not a phone and that's her stand. Skipping, because not a lot of story happens that's detrimental to certain characters other than the, the girl who goes to the therapist and it's revealed the little girl has a crush on her dad and they said it's normal. I... I think I need a shower for saying that. Anyways, so, I'll just give you a bit more of that. It's just take like a time as well. We get to the story that picks up. Our journalist finds the lead in her, in her spooky, scary skeleton case when it turns out her phone number, shock of all shocks, was recycled. Because phone number companies can't think of anything original. So, anyways... So that fucking happens. We learned out that, you know, this young girl that she used to have her phone before her was in love with a man, and she got him a burner phone. And it's revealed more importantly that the person she was in love with was the, the husband. I feel dirtier somehow saying that out loud. And she he was doing what... Any any pedophile would have done and was railing this underage schoolgirl. Remember that pedophile ring from earlier? This is kind of fully circled around to it. So we have now a story with a stalker and pedophilia mentions, and we have a now continuing story of a character who's raping an underage girl. How were these not connecting? How, does it make any sense? Because, fuck it, look, you ha it's got a totally Ouroboros and around and will be stripped in a way that makes sense, but it said it's fucking not. I don't know why it's not making sense, 
but the fucking probably should have. I feel like. Anyways, they have an affair for like a month or so. So well, they break it off, and then she gets so upset, she kills herself. And one of her leads, and as a child, gouged her eyes out because of it. All because he did what in relationship this is called it. The opposite of what's called a pro gamer move. Obviously, much like my ex after cheating on me, decides to try to go be a good person. Except the dude, you were railing an underage schoolgirl. Like you made you were falling over your dick and you did And now I I need another shower. So this movie makes me question one thing. Was the child in love, actually in love with her dad? Or was the dad just doing things to the daughter? God, I fucking hope not. Please don't. Please, I don't like that. But the scenes where like she pulls her knife makes me wonder, what is this daughter's obsession? It, you, it's something it wants you to ask it. And then when it reveals that it's no, it's spoiler, it's just a ghost... And the ghost of the mistress is possessing the daughter because the daughter is super in love with him and will, will kill the wife and friend and possess his daughter to be with him forever. You see, that's why this is weird. And Freud is probably smiling. It happened right, not right now. It's clear that it was a ghost. But it makes you want me in like 10 showers. And skipping further near the end, we learned that the daughter is possessed, obviously, by the mistress's ghost. And more importantly, we find out where the corpse of the mistress is. She's buried in the guest room. And also, her hair is copper wearing. Now, hair doesn't work the same way copper does. Copper is used to cut electricity for the internet and phones, obviously. Hair is brittle and will burn. In a socket, because it's fucking brittle molecules. Not not fragile yet sturdy copper wiring. So, again, and so she pulls the mistress out of the wall, and then in, off the copper wire, I suppose, and then it pans over to the wife, who admits that she's known, and she helped kill him, her and hid the body because we only we can't have one person in this movie. We can't have more than one fucking person in this movie who's a, a good person coming out of this. So, beyond Jen Wu, Jay Wu, and the daughter who's being possessed, so, so, everybody in this, in this, in this movie, beyond Jin Wu and the daughter, because she's a child and she's being possessed by a ghost, so that doesn't count, is a bad person. And these all people have likable characteristics, two of them. Whether it's art, being a good dad, being baby, so, let's, let's, let's get to talking about everything else I liked about this movie here. So, what I really liked about this movie is how the movie feels tense. It mixes the tense atmosphere and the actors acting in a way that really makes you... It's really amazing, especially the little girl who nails his performance. Especially the when she breaks her fucking neck. <laughs> Photography is really, really on point. There's, there are scenes in this movie with a lot of jump scares that actually work. There are a tense scene. So, my favorite jump scare in this movie is she's driving a, I guess a jump scare, whatever, who cares. She's, she's giving someone a ride home, and 
it's just tense. There's a build up there, and it goes to the speed. She just points her finger like this, and it's really tense, especially when there's realizes she moves up with the girl, and then the sound design makes it really, really unique because it's not like music. It's not like an industrial horror where it's like, yeah, Nine Nails is playing while Alice shoots zombies with her dick. Like the only song that actually plays is Moonlight Sonata, and. I don't know why Asia doesn't like Moonlight Sonata. It's fucking weird. Like, <coughs> it's going... <coughs> Every... I don't know. It's really interesting way of looking at it. The characters are well-written and believable, including the pedophile. Uh, everybody's convictions are interesting, I feel like. Even for some I can just I'm not mentioning. Uh, what I didn't like is that the subplot for the stalker just vanishes with no real reason other than THE GHOST DID IT! But then you get seen, but it doesn't really make sense because it doesn't sure if it's a real experience or not. Everyone in this movie stands to protect this little girl, when she's human, is a shitty person at the same time as a convincing person. Like, the pedophile story isn't really mentioned, but it clearly could have fit narrative of the older predator preying on the young girl, although I might have missed that potentially, I'm not the best. Overall, the movie's an 8 out of 10. I think the version of Fight on DVD. To buy it legally or just come out on YouTube who cares anymore. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me so much. You have a good day. Um, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'm Nexus Giga, Corporal Survivor. Uh, this is my terrible horror review, review movie. Uh, peace. Wait a minute. That was like my ringtone.